Of course, the attraction for 321, when, when I watch it now, is looking back at, at, at the cars, the vehicles that are brand new in pristine condition and they, they rolled out and there you've got a Ford Fiesta. <laughs> yeah. Bang, and it's great. All long hair and sideboards and uh, crazy clothes and it was great, exciting period, wasn't it? late 70s rocket just look at that Come on with me. Hold my hand. You gotta let it loose. now look at that that's in fact operable right now I'm shooting you there's the zoom out and the zoom in marvelous thing it's talking as well of course there's there's the microphone as well adjustable double bed. Mark it out in the rehearsal room, and they say, right, there's the water, there's the bridge, there's where you're dancing, you can go over the bridge, come down, or whatever, and then we actually go in and see it, what they've done, and actually make it look like you're in Venice. It was just amazing. The moonbeams glisten, and the stars are waking. The set designers, they, they make or break, really, what 321 was about. And every week was totally different. The set designers and the costumes and the music. And I think the lavishness of it lent itself to what we did in choreography. What the costumes did. What Ted did, what every, every single person changed every week. How can they see with in their eyes? We never bothered about money. I mean, we never ever told that you can't afford this. It was a, a good show, and we just uh, went ahead. We wanted a, an elaborate set. We got an elaborate set. expensive, um, something we don't get today. There we are, sir. There is a MacGuffin. A what? This is a hat, but are you going to call it a MacGuffin? That is a MacGuffin, and that is a MacGuffin, and that is a MacGuffin. I'll take your word for it. Right? I used to have to come up and say, and this is your MacGuffin, and explain this thing, and I had so no we idea. We thought was being rude. Yes. We didn't know what the MacGuffin was. I had no idea what I was talking about. Now then, what are you leaving for the MacGuffin? Titfer. Oh, your tit for tat. Yes. Your pith helmet. Yes, my pith helmet. And you have, yes, I said that right. <laughs> yes. And you have a rhyme? Yes, I do. This prize is sort of unusual. You can move it for pleasure or sport. When you wind up inside, it'll give you a ride without visible means of support. <laughs> ah, there you are. Thank okay. you very much indeed. Big, big smile for Ted, and off yes. you go, and you go, what does that mean? I've got no idea. MacGuffins were like, like clues that you'd bring in. I'd, I'd come on as, uh, uh, like, uh, Kirk Douglas or Peter Falk doing Columbo, and I'd bring something out of that sketch. There's one final thing I'd like to leave you. I'm going to leave you this. Oh. <laughs> Heavy smoker. <laughs> Put it on the table and, it, and then you'd read a rhyme that had nothing to do with anything and nobody could understand what the clues were but the, the, there was a very deep hidden meaning within the clues and you read uh, the, the question out and then the couple have to make a selection as to which they're going to lose so the toy bunny brought in by uh, cheryl of course and the spur which was brought in by pete aitkin which one of those would you like to hear again which one bunny just one more 
It's, yeah. it's up to you. Yeah. You listen to you hear the bunny again? Right, OK. Cheryl said if you win this prize, we'll be the best of friends, but stick to 30 round the bends. It's a great Oh, it's it really is, is it? He's yeah. so sure it's great. I know. And he loves it too. He loves greyhound racing, yes. isn't it? What are you going to do then, David? Which one's going? Yeah. Definitely the toy bunny? Yeah. OK. Cheryl Murray's toy bunny said if you win this prize, we'll be the best of friends, but stick to 30 round the bends. Now then, the clue, of course, was a toy bunny, and who or what is a man's best friend? A dog. Right, yeah. Now, what kind of dog would chase a bunny round bends? You're absolutely right. Your very own greyhound. <laughs> Dear. Look at that. Thank you very much indeed. And Patsy, who are our third couple tonight? Well, my couple are Gary Waters and his fian fiance Suzanne Danan, who come from the Wirral in Merseyside. Well, my, my mum saw an advert in the um, in the local newspaper that said um, that they requ Yorkshire Television required young couples for a TV quiz show. So uh, we applied, and then we were accepted. And we didn't know anything about the show because it was brand new, so it's never been on before. Whisked into a dressing room, uh, made up, and then uh, out on the set. Ladies and gentlemen, Ted Rogers. That's when uh, the shock happened of uh, realizing that it was actually filmed in front of a live studio. Thank you very much indeed. That's when the nerves really took a hold. There wasn't the awareness of being a contestant on television, which is around now. Uh, we were doing really well. In fact, we were probably in the lead then. Yeah. And then came the uh, ever-memorable question. We want the names of countries on the mainland of South America. All right? So countries on the mainland of South America, and I will start you with Paraguay. Paraguay. Mozambique. I thought he'd said South Africa. <laughs> And uh, the memorable answer was Mozambique, which was obviously <laughs> totally wrong. That's in Africa, not South America. There was a tie-break, a tie-break question. This TV personality was born in London in 1921. He was and I remember answering, the answer was Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> Three years he compared Sunday night at the Pal Palladium. Bruce no, not Ted Rogers, Bruce Forsyth, you were right. And you yeah. picked me up in the air, yeah. And, uh, and we got through to the final. Oh, yeah, congratulations. Oh, my. I think it was me that gave the car away. One has to go. Which one will it be? This is it. Um, well, I don't know. I think the bracelet. What do you think? It's tonight's star prize, oh. the car. Oh, my. And there was also, um, there was a mink coat, wasn't there? Yes. Which, um... One of the girls' models came down with the mink coat. See what it feels like. And uh, he put it round his shoulders, he said oh, to me, you know, would you like to go to the match in that? <laughs> but, um... Oh, that was the one you had to do about five takes of as well, yeah. wasn't it? Never mind the car now. Go to the match in it, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <she's done> <laughs> I'm sure you're right. We actually won about, uh, as then, a thousand pounds worth of electrical equipment. Some cooking and mixing. Uh, there was a uh, yeah, Kenwood chef and um, a lawn mower, hedge cutter. Still in use today. Yes, a shaver, a tea's made. <laughs> and hundred pounds worth of taxi fares to get yes. it home. Yeah, lovely, Thanks lovely, lovely folks. There've been terrific people to be on the show. Good night, everybody. Well, we got a phone call about uh, half past eleven at night, night on Saturday night from friends, and mm. uh, they said, uh, "Quick, put Challenge TV on. Uh, you're actually on the television with three, two, one." So that was the first opportunity we had to, to get a video of, of the show. And as I said, ever since then, uh, our daughter Jessica has uh, been loaning it out to friends. <laughs> and uh, the long hair and the moustache and everything else <laughs> and that keeps flowing back and, uh, and the, uh, the head in embarrassment. But it was, yeah, it's, it's a good reminder anyway for us now and again, sort of plugs in when friends come round and uh, we have a good laugh. And his gear, Ted's gear was great. You know, he used to wear some fantastic. There's one show I had, and he had like a blue blazer, and with like white piping around it, and it was like. But Ted was always sharp. A very immaculate man. Isn't oh, he? Very yes, immaculate. Yes. Very a Taylor's dream. Yeah. Ted. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Very immaculate. Very charming. So let me give you one important tip. You ain't got 
nothing.